Hello fan, see the incredible figures presented by the president of Tottenham, Daniel Levy, on all the club's expenses, profits and investments in recent years. But first, let me give you a message. Welcome to the channel, subscribe so you don't miss any Spurs news. So let's go to the video. Tottenham's annual financial results have been disclosed, and chairman Daniel Levy acknowledges that previous transfer missteps have put a strain on the club that needs to be rectified. As the world recovers from the pandemic, Tottenham's financial boost from June 2021 to June 2022 is evident in their match receipts, which surged from £1.9 million to £106.1 million, owing to their first full season in the new stadium at full capacity. However, their early exit from the Europa Conference League due to Covid restrictions led to a decline in UEFA prize money from £23.6 million to £10.2 million. TV and media revenues were £144.2 million, 2021, £184.4 million, due to the delayed playing and accounting of games and related TV and media revenues from 2020. On the other hand, commercial revenues from sponsorship and merchandise sales rose by 20.7% to £31.5 million, thanks to the arrival of new sponsors, open stores, and the launch of major events at the stadium throughout the year. Tottenham Hotspur has released its annual financial report, in which chairman Daniel Levy acknowledged past transfer blunders that placed a strain on the club and required correction. The report showed that the club's revenue from match receipts rose from £1.9 million to £106.1 million in the year from June 2021 to June 2022, due to a full season of games played at the new stadium at capacity. However, their early exit from the Europa Conference League during the COVID-19 pandemic led to a decrease in UEFA prize money from £23.6 million to £10.2 million. TV and media revenues dropped from £184.4 million in 2021 to £144.2 million in 2022, due to a shift in when gains and related TV and media revenues were accounted for. On the other hand, commercial revenues from sponsorship and merchandising increased by 20.7% to £31.5 million, thanks to new sponsorships, open stores, and events hosted at the stadium. The club's operating expenses, excluding football trading, rose 18.7% to £403.4 million, due to increased costs for the first team and the resumption of full matchday operations. The profit from operations, before depreciation, amortization, player trading, interest, and taxation increased 15.7% to £112.3 million from £97.1 million. Despite this, the loss for the year after taking into account depreciation, amortization, player trading, interest, and taxation was £50.1 million, down from £83.8 million the previous year. In addition, the club confirmed that they reached a capital increase commitment with majority shareholder ENIC, worth up to £150 million through the issuance of convertible A shares. During the year, £100 million of these shares were subscribed and later converted into ordinary permanent share capital, increasing ENIC's shareholding from 85.56% to 86.58%. The club also noted that 90% of its financial borrowings, worth £852.6 million, are at fixed rates with an average interest rate of 2.81% and an average maturity of 20.4 years, some stretching as far as 2051, ensuring limited impact on the club's ability to invest in the playing squad. No dividends were paid during the year. In his statement, Chairman Daniel Levy highlighted the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on the club's financial performance. He acknowledged that the pandemic delayed the first full season with fans in the new stadium by two years, resulting in a loss of approximately £200 million in revenue. He also mentioned the arrival of Antonio Conte and his coaching staff in November 2021, the strong additions to the squad, 
and the club's successful finish to the 2021-2022 season, which saw the team win 10 out of its last 14 matches and qualify for the UEFA Champions League, with Hugh min Son being named joint winner of the Premier League's Golden Boot, with Mohamed Salah. Despite the challenges posed by the most congested fixture list in Premier League history, the dedication of our players and staff has been remarkable, and everyone should be proud of their accomplishments this season. Currently, we are ranked 5th in the Premier League, competing in the round of 16 in the UEFA Champions League, and in the 5th round of the FA Cup. Under the leadership of head coach Rehan Skinner, Tottenham Hotspur women reached new heights, finishing 5th in the Women's Super League, and reaching the semi-final of the Continental Tires League Cup. We recently built a new training facility for the women's team, and we will continue to invest in their future. The future growth of the women's game is essential and requires fresh ideas. Unlike men's football, women's football is not yet widely supported, and more needs to be done to create a regulatory framework that attracts fans and generates commercial income. Clubs need to make long-term commitments and receive support from the governing bodies to grow the sport globally. Regarding transfers, we have invested over £500 million in the men's first team squad since opening the stadium in April 2019, putting us in the top five of spending in the Premier League. Our commitment to the team was shown by our £47 million investment in the January window. However, balancing long-term investment and short-term success is crucial in transfer spending. Poorly made player purchases can have a significant financial and sporting impact for future seasons, and we have taken steps to improve our recruitment processes. Our recent transfer windows reflect this improved approach. Our objective has always been to balance the financial stability of the club with maintaining a competitive presence on the field. We must act in a way that is both beneficial for us and sustainable in the long term. The Premier League has undergone significant changes in the past decade, and it is understandable that some fans may demand more spending. However, it is not a sustainable option for many clubs in the league. We are competing in a world where sovereign wealth ownership and consortium finance are becoming increasingly prevalent and where a few dominant teams have the power to manipulate the market through their spending capabilities. We support the recent changes in the governance of the game that promote financial sustainability and financial fair play FFP. New FFP regulations have been introduced in Europe, including the UEFA Financial Sustainability Rules, which will take effect starting in the 2025-26 season. These regulations are based on three pillars, solvency, stability, and cost control, and clubs will have three seasons to adjust to them. These new rules are expected to significantly impact the sport. Going forward, controlling our costs, increasing our commercial and sponsorship revenue, and securing consistent European qualification will be key to our ability to continue investing in our first team and remain competitive. Due to current global events and the impact of Brexit, we anticipate rising costs in our supply chains, a tripling of energy prices, increased business rates, and disruptions to deliveries, which will collectively impact our club. We will strive to manage our operations in a way that minimizes these effects. Despite these challenges, we have recently extended our partnership with Nike until 2033 and celebrated a decade of collaboration with our primary partner, AIA. We are grateful for their continued support. We have also added new sponsors and are focusing on expanding our partnerships. The completion of the stadium will have a tremendous impact on our revenues due to the increased capacity and opportunities for hosting third-party events. The pandemic may have caused a two-year delay, but we are now back on track and working towards growth. We have conducted a comprehensive review of all our football operations to ensure they align with our values of innovation, drive, and excellence. Improvements have been made and continue to be implemented. Key to our future success is better recruitment and a world-class academy. Our goal is to assemble a strong and deep squad with players who have a winning mentality, a balance of youth and experience. This includes continuous succession planning, as evidenced by the recent signings of Pape Matosa and Destiny Udigi. Our rebuild last summer brought down the average age of new recruits to 23 years. 
The January transfer window saw us add two internationals to the team, Arnaut Danjuma from Villarreal and Pedro Porro from Sporting Lisbon. Our development squad was also strengthened with the arrival of Jude Sunsupbel from Chelsea. We understand our fans' frustration with numerous close calls and the lack of trophies. Over the past two decades, we have reached 14 semi-finals, six finals, and only won one of them. Our hope is that a trophy win is soon within reach. We are deeply grateful to our fans for their unwavering support and loyalty, and we are determined to repay them with success. In response to the government's fan-led review, published in November 2021, the club is fully committed to improving fan communication and engagement. We have collaborated with various supporter groups to establish the structure and mandate of our fan advisory board, and we are excited to announce that applications for this board will be invited in the coming weeks. We would like to thank the Tottenham Hotspur Supporters Trust, Proud Lily Whites, Spurs Ability, and Spurs Reach for their contributions and input. We look forward to greater structured communication and wider representation of all our stakeholders. On the matter of utilizing the stadium, he stated, we are in a prime position to fully utilize the potential of the stadium. This includes developing visitor attractions, such as stadium tours, the Dare Skywalk and Edge, conferencing and events, and third-party events. It's been heartening to see things return to normal with the stadium busier than ever, filled with fans and visitors from around the world. It's once again a hub for football, as well as a variety of events, including boxing, rugby, the return of the NFL, and serving as a stop on the global concert tour circuit. We are pleased to offer club members priority ticket windows for third-party events, which has been especially popular for high-profile concerts like Beyoncé and Red Hot Chili Peppers. These activities provide diverse sources of funding to invest in our main focus, football. We are proud of our work in the community, which reflects our commitment to our values. During this time, we installed two 5A side pitches, the N17 Arena, a new community sports hub and football talent identification center, on the perimeter of the stadium. This not only allows the club's foundation to provide much-needed recreation and sports projects for the local community, but it also enables us to identify talented local youth right in our own backyard. We have also donated thousands of tickets to local residents and school children, allowing them to participate in the exciting events we host and drive spending in local businesses. We are more aware than ever of our responsibility for environmental sustainability, and for the third consecutive year, the club topped the Premier League sustainability table published by BBC Sport, Sport Positive. We have also joined the UN Sports for Climate Action, Race to Zero, pledging to reduce emissions by 50% by 2030 and achieve net zero by 2040. During this period, we partnered with Sky to host the first ever net zero carbon football match at the elite level, the Hash Game Zero initiative, which was named the best sustainability initiative at the 2022 Football Business Awards. With the launch of a new stadium that features numerous environmentally friendly processes, such as plastic-free cutlery and a comprehensive vegan menu, we are dedicated to promoting our passion for the planet, people, and nature in all our club operations. During the period, the OOF Gallery opened its doors in Warmington House, showcasing a series of football exhibitions curated by top contemporary artists, free for fans and local residents alike. In addition, the London Academy of Excellence Tottenham, sponsored and located at Lily White House near the stadium, continues to thrive. The school offers education to the brightest children from a disadvantaged area, taught by instructors from prestigious independent schools. In 2021, 75% of the Academy's students received offers from Russell Group Universities, including 10 to Oxford and Cambridge, a remarkable achievement by both the pupils and teachers and a testament to the impact of quality education. Two major job fairs were also held, attracting 2,500 job seekers and 80 different employers from various industries. While the club remains dedicated to revitalizing the neighborhood, it recognizes that creating jobs and improving education are crucial in transforming lives. As one of the areas with the highest levels of poverty and unemployment, the club is committed to working with all parties to promote sustainable growth for the North Tottenham community. 
Levy also expressed his condolences for the loss of Queen Elizabeth, who was honoured during a match against Leicester City, and the sudden passing of the club's fitness coach, John Piero Ventron. He praised the club's staff for their hard work and dedication in managing a busy schedule and embracing new activities at the stadium. Levy also congratulated World Cup winner Christian Romero, Harry Kane for breaking the club's all-time leading goal-scorer record, and Antonio for his recovery. Levy emphasized that the club's focus is on finishing the season strong and thanked the fans and staff for their support. He signed off with a message of encouragement, saying, C.O.Y.S., Daniel Levy. A new fan, what did you think of this interview with Levy and the numbers presented by him? Comment, because your opinion is very important to us.